Hello and welcome to YouTube. It is time for my newest build. This is a pet cabalist. And it's also not any pet cabalist, it is a fire skeleton cabalist. Now most of you might know that I'm not like the best pet player and also I don't really like playing pets too much in general. But lots of people have been asking me to make a pet build after all and here we go. This is the first pet build that we're doing. There was always one pet build I really wanted to do. And that was a fire skeleton pet build. Ever since the introduction of the Corvax Burning Blade with the Forgotten Gods expansion, I really wanted to try this out. And that's actually my second attempt at doing this. Like, the first attempt was a Defiler that died to Elite Corvax while leveling. And this is now a Kabbalist. We managed to push this guy all the way to 100, as well as even kill all the main campaign bosses, kill all the dungeon bosses. So, even including Morganath, even though the Morganath kill wasn't like the smoothest. And then we also kill Lokar, Bourbon Clones, Ravager of Mines on Elite only though, and also SR 50 to 51 so far. So the build features two Hellhounds, one Raven, one Summon Blood Fiend, and also 12 Skeletons. And. The damage is pretty good as you can see, but Skeletons are kinda squishy. And there's also one more factor that makes skeletons worse than just them being squishy in my opinion. It is that by default you have all these pets set to normal aggro range, right? You can right click on the pets here and set them to either defensive, normal or aggressive stance. But yeah, with the skeletons you cannot do that. By default they are set to normal stance. And the difference between normal, aggressive and defensive stances are that they will basically have like a different aggro radius, right? If you have these aggressive, they will like start attacking enemies from further away. So basically you need to not stand as close to the enemies for your pets to still attack them, right? So with skeletons, I think it's also the same for um, rip spirits actually, right? With rip spirits and skeletons, you will have to stand closer to the enemy than with all these other pets in order to make sure that your pets actually attack the enemy that you want them to attack right? And that was especially a problem against, for example, Ravager. Like in the Ravager fight, you can see that sometimes lots of my pets are like, like my skeletons are not attacking Ravager, but like the other four pets are attacking him. And because of that, like the other four pets just die, whereas the skeletons just stand around me and do nothing. And in my opinion, that kind of needs some changes into the game, like to how pet mechanics, like to how pet aggro ranges work in Grimdorn by default. Like, in my opinion, most people that actually know that you can change these stances, they were gonna like use aggressive stance anyway, like basically all the time. Because you want to be like as safe as possible while your pets deal all the damage on, on usual pet builds, right? So because of that, my suggestion would be that the Create either removes pet stances overall and makes like the aggressive stance like the default stance for all pets, or they can still like have the stances available for like these pets over here. But give, say, the Reef Spirits and the Skeletons the aggressive default attack, like the at at aggressive stance as their like default stance. Right? That would make Skeletons a little bit smoother to play, in my opinion. And that is kind of necessary because while Skeletons do destroy like most of the end game, co I mean, campaign content rather, end game main campaign content, so, like ultimate main campaign content, um, they do struggle. A lot or like more than other pets at least against like harder content such as Shadow Realm 50 plus or like uh, super bosses such as like Ravager. I haven't even tried Mog Dragon actually yet, but maybe they don't struggle as much against Mog Dragon. We'll see. And even against some of the um, dungeon bosses, they actually do struggle more than even non pet builds. Like against Mogunath, for example, or like Lokar, which is I don't know, like not even a real super boss. They died way too much. I'm fine like with them dying, like, I mean skeletons are supposed to be dispensable pets that are squishy, right? But they die like faster than you even can resummon them, and uh, that's kind of a problem. Like even on this build, I have only 8.7 skill recharge on this, which is already kind of low compared to other skeleton builds, or like compared to how skeletons would be by default without any gear, right? And I'm also spawning 6 skeletons per click, so like, I only need to press this button twice to summon all of my 12 skeletons around. You still run around with like zero skeletons too much against like some specific bosses at least. And I don't know, that would be okay if at least the aggro range was like big enough so that you can like, yeah, use them properly. 
just like you can use these parts, right? But the combination of them dying so fast, which is like a big difference to the wraiths, for example, and you having to stand like kind of closer to the enemy than, say, when you're only using these kind of pets, um, kind of makes skeletons unnecessarily worse than other pets in my opinion. That said, fire skeletons are still like the most fun pet build I've ever had, and in my opinion, it's a very very nice main campaign build. It's also pretty decent for like SR. 50 and maybe like a little bit higher on softcore as well. It can also kill Ravager. I would not do it again though It takes way too fucking long and skeletons die like way too much Nevertheless, if you want to play a skeleton pet build in the end game and you want something a little bit more spicy than a vitality pet build Then yeah, this fire skeleton pet build is perfectly fine for that I would say and it does defeat most of the content perfectly fine. I would say like for 99% of players this build is perfectly fine as it is. On the other hand, for most players it was also going to be a struggle to farm the Konsa rings, right, as well as like a, a good Kovac burning blade. But I mean the deeps is here as you can see here against this tummy as well. It's like a 20, 19 to 20 second stomach kill time, right? Alright, now let us check out the skill point allocation for the fire skeleton Kabbalas here. We are a Kabbalas, so Occultist and Necromancer, and the main ability basically is the Ray Skeletons. You can use this ability all the way from level 1 to 100, no problem at all, if you know how to support them properly and you try to aim for pet bonus gear. So in this build we have 25 out of 16 Ray Skeletons, unfortunately we cannot use 26 out of 16, because we cannot use Bone Scavenger Death Grips anymore because of the physical to vitality conversion that could add it to those grips. On the other hand we can use Lost Souls because vitality conversion has been removed there. 16 out of 12 Undead Legion for plus 6 summon limit as well as CDR and skill energy cost reduction. Skill energy cost reduction doesn't matter at all but like 6 more skeletons and less cooldown is really really nice. 1 point in the world of the crypt which can be taken out if you are using double purple seal of consar. I'm currently only using one purple and one blue because, well, I don't have two purple, I only have one purple and one blue. Because this does convert physical to vitality, 26% of the skeleton's uh, physical will be converted to vitality via this will of the crypt. And we, if we had like full physical to fire conversion through double seal of consars as well as the one cover X burning blade, will of the crypt might be a DPS loss, and because of that you should probably take out the point if you have two purple rings of consar. The second pet, one point here, 12 points here into rotting fumes, that's how I use it right now. This is for the the aid reduction as well as the generation of additional threat. I'm not quite sure if this is like the way to go here. Maybe you also can only use this level as a one pointer, but I've seen like several pet balls use quite some points here. And since I'm not a pet expert myself really, I just trust other people saying that you should soft cap this for like the taunt or something like that. If you're like more experienced than me though, feel free to put these points somewhere else. One point spectral binding, this is just for some HP and the rest doesn't really matter actually. A one point spectral wrath. There is an attack speed reduction on this, as well as some physical and some vitality resistance reduction, which does help a little bit because some of the pets still deal some vitality damage. Call of the Grave, this is just a one pointer here as well, because as far as I know, it's not that awesome. It's like a small bonus buff on top, but it's not really is something super amazing, so yeah, just one point here. And also, only one point in Mark of Torment. I mean, six points would be better than only three out of ten here, but I was struggling to, like, find the points to put here, actually. One point Bone Harvest, one point into Dread for the Confuse as well as the two meter range, and then 14 out of 12 into Soul Harvest to give pets a vitality damage and any all damage boost. Now, Oculus, this is where you have the real supporting stuff for your skeletons. We have one point into Raven, 16 out of 12 into Storm Spirit, giving all of my pets 410 elemental damage as well as 34% lightning resistance. Note that elemental damage is usually split between fire, lightning and cold, but we do convert lots of the lightning to fire as well. So that's like almost two thirds fire and like one third cold. Also one point the lightning strike because why not also the lightning gets converted to fire for pets again. The hellhound is kind of the second main pet. So we have two pets because of the soul set and that's why I also chose to max out the Hellhound here to 26 out of 16. One point into Emberclaw for, well, the fire, chaos, and also the taunt. Hellfire Aura, well, this does give, like, all of my pets 
flat chaos damage, and the constant rings convert that chaos into fire. Inferno Breath, this is a one pointer now. I'm still not quite sure how good this is. I have it as a one pointer right now. It might be worth it to use it now, ever since the last buff. Before the last buff, it was definitely not worth to use it. It was pretty garbage. But now, maybe. You could also even try to max this out. Maybe it's actually good now. I have no idea. I just put a one pointer here because I knew it was not complete trash anymore, but I don't quite know how good it really is. Bonds of Bismil, one point here for the added HP to parts, and the manipulation, you want this max out for the all damage and total speed. For exclusive skill, we actually use possession over Master of Death, because Master of Death does convert physical to vitality to parts, and we don't want more of that. I already have someone with the crypt, and already this is not that great. Also, the other stats in Master of Death are mainly targeted for acid and vitality parts, so again, this is not too interesting for me. I rather want to use Possession, which just gives me 15% damage resorption, as well as 25% kill stress and 100% skill disruption, which always would be toned down to 80%, because 80% is the max skill disruption that you can get by default. Also, in the Accurate Test 3, I'm using Curse of Frailty as a 100 here, and then 10 points into Vulnerability. Vulnerability, obviously, to reduce enemy elemental resistance, as well as vitality resistance, as well as defensive ability. And then I'm also using 19 out of 60 in Battle Dreek. This is not max because I don't really have more points to put here. But yeah, this gives my pets and myself more OA, acid damage and heal, as well as HP regen. And then I also got 12 points to the Aspect of the Guardian for the Fizz Rats and Poison Rats for all the pets. Moving on to the Devotions, I try to go a little bit more defensive here because skeletons are kind of squishy already and you don't really need more damage if you already have like 16 pets. You just want the pets to be tankier and you want yourself to, well, also not die on hardcore. So I went with Ishtak here, I went with Ulo, Watcher, Panther, Scarab to get like the points to Ishtak. Then we also have the mandatory Shepherd's Call. This one is, as far as I know, almost always used in any pet build. And also I took Typhus for like some generic good pet stands like Total Speed over here, Fizzerance as well. Now the four remaining devotions are damage devotions. First of all, we have the Aether Fire, the Imp, on the Skeleton. Since we're getting fire damage on pets, and this has no cooldown, this will proc a lot from Skeletons. We have 12 Skeletons procking this all the time, and this is going to be very nice. Also note that if you apply damage devotion, such as Aether Fire, to pets, they would actually also scale with pet damage or not with player damage anymore. So even though this usually would scale with your own, percentage of bonuses, it will now scale with pet bonuses. Then I also got Flame Torrent. Flame Torrent is pretty good also because we do convert Chaos to Fire for pets as well, and this is bound to the Hellhound because we have two of them. This also has a pretty nice proc rate. Next up we have Eldritch Fire. I had this on Curse of Reality, but because of the reasons I just said, right, with this stuff scaling with pets, when you put it on pets, I think it should actually be better if you put it on a pet. And once proc, this will also spread anyway, so I think it might be better to actually put this on, say, the Blind Fiend than on Curse of Frailty. It kind of depends, like, if you want more damage out of this, you should put it on the Blind Fiend, right, because then it will scale with pet bonuses, and also, like, the Chaos will be converted to fire, and the fire will be scaled up with pets. But if you want this, like, maybe proc more consistently, you can put it to Curse of Frailty. On the other hand, Curse of Frailty does draw aggro, and you don't want to use it sometimes against some bosses, and then you would lose out on Eldritch Fire, actually, whereas you would always want to have this guy attacking. It's kind of debatable, like, where you want to put this, I guess. And the last devotion is the Elemental Storm devotion. This is, again, to reduce elemental resistances, and we have this on the Raven here, in this case. Another devotion that I want to highlight here, that will also make threats a lot tankier, would be the Light of Empyrean devotion. This is really, really great for pets, and I kind of regret not being able to take it at least so far, because you have this like plus five all rest to pets. This would be an insane like tankiness boost to all of my pets, including skeletons, and maybe that's what you want to aim for after all. Maybe even over Ishtak when you're playing skeletons. On the other hand, Ishtak also gives me bleeding resistance, which I do lack on my pets. So on top of Ishtak being a very, very good defensive and offensive pet devotion. Moving on to the gear now, this is where it starts to become a little bit spicy. We are using the Lost Soul set. I mean, so far, so not too exciting and spicy. But ever since the latest change to Lost Soul set, this is not a vitality pet only set anymore. It lost all the two vitality conversion on the set, so you can now freely use it, for example, for fighter pets as well. The only thing that does, does support now, and that's like mandatory for kinda, is for hellhounds, like you wanna do a hellhound build, like a dual hellhound build at least, as well as a proper skeleton build, because the 4-piece set is just insane for skeletons as you can see here. 3 more skeletons, 20% physicalness, 24% attack speed, 24% casting speed, 40% HP, 
it's really insane for skeletons. And to be honest, I kind of wish they would just buff the base skeletons a little bit more, like the base numbers and skeletons a little bit more, and maybe like nerf the four piece here a little bit. Like that would be a fine trade off in my opinion. Buff skeletons overall a little bit, and like maybe reduce the four piece bonus of Shepherd of the Zos Souls a little bit. Just a little bit, because in my opinion, overall, skeletons still need a small, at least a small buff compared to other cards. Now, on top of the Lost Souls set, what is really enabling the build? The build enabling item here is Korvax's Burning Blade as well as Consa Rings. Korvax's Burning Blade is very easy to get in Act 7, right? You just kill some of the Korvax uh, guys, the big guys with the red swords, right? And this will give me like plus two summons to raise skeletons, meaning that I will summon six skeletons per click instead of four. And also it will like reduce the cooldown of that skeleton, like by another second. More important though is the bonus to all cards. You have physical to fire conversion and also bonus attack speed and bonus fire damage. You can see that I rolled Occultus of Arcane Balance. Arcane Balance might be a rare suffix, but it doesn't really do anything for me here. And Occultus prefix is pretty good actually, because it does give me plus two blood of Dreek, and that's always helpful. But if you found a dagger like this with actual pet affixes, that would be even better, obviously. This one doesn't have any pet affixes at all, and you could in theory get like a pet prefix and a pet suffix. So there's still some potential here. Well, this is a dagger though, and Lost Souls does have a weapon as well, that kinda well messes with being able to like use this in an offhand or like using two of these, right? So I need to use a Dial of Crust to allow myself to dual wield, because Kabbalist by default does not have the ability to dual wield. Next up we have the Concert Rings. Now the Concert Rings are found in the Tomb of the Heretic, and you get these from the Consar Mage. He is one of the seven mages that you can find in the Magi event arena, and this one has like a 3% drop rate, something like that, so basically a 2 out of 7 times 3% chance to get this one. Now, it is probably one of the rarest items in the game, but at least it is target farmable, I guess. Uh, you can still, like, I don't know, run the Tomb of the Heretic maybe like 100 times and don't get this still, so yeah, this might be a little bit time consuming. Also, the bonuses to all pets give you flat fire damage to pets, Chaos to Fire Conversion, which helps with the Hellfire Aura from the Hellhounds, and also Lightning to Fire Conversion, which does help with the Elemental Damage Aura from the Raven, as well as the Lightning Damage spells from the Raven itself. On top of that, it does give you Attack Speed for pets, and has a, another proc that gives you bonus Fire Damage and bonus Physical to Fire Conversion through the Gaze of Consar. Note that to proc this Gaze of Consar spell, you do need to actually use an ability yourself, so it will not proc on pet attack, it will only proc on your own attack. For that I can for example recommend the El Omen spell, because you kinda need to use El Omen anyway to reduce enemy damage, and this is a taking ability that like takes all the time, so it will have like a pretty good chance to proc the Gaze of Consar. Now alternatively you can use the Seal of Consar, you can see that I'm using one of the Seal of Consar here as well, because I don't have two of the purple rings, ideally you want two purple rings, but yeah you can also play this build with two blue rings instead, and the Seal of Consar is, well, also dropping from the Consar Magi in the Tomb of the Heretic, but it has a way better drop chance and there's like a real opportunity for you to get some more of these. I think I have like three or four of these already actually. Yeah, they also give you fire damage to pets, a little bit less than the purple one, but still okay. And also have Chaos to Fire conversion as well as attack speed. So at least they convert the Chaos Aura from Hellfire as well to fire. For the gloves, I'm using Mythical Overlord's Iron Grip for the 4% DA to Bones of Bismuth to myself, as well as crit damage OA for pets. These are overall pretty solid and unfortunately you cannot use Bone Scavenger anymore. For boots I'm using Mythical Rift Hound leather boots for plus 2 Hellhound, plus 2 Everclaw, plus 2 Summon Blood Fiend, as well as pet all damage and total speed. And these are actually craftable and you want to craft for lots of spirit and cunning here to be able to equip this dagger. For the metal I'm using Mythical Shadow Fiend's Cord. This one is just really really good for any pet cabalas because it does give you basically plus 1 all skills. And plus 1 all skills is really 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 good for pet builds. Also like plus 2 Blood Burst on top and some HP as well as bonuses to pets in the form of 85% all damage, 5% away, 30% pierce runs and 25% vet runs in my case. So yeah, these are very very solid for any pet cabalas and I think they're like best in slot for basically whatever pet cabalas you play. For the relic I'm using Mogdrogon's Arda right now. I was using Dirge of Arcobia for a long time 
because, well, I didn't have the mouths to actually craft this one. But Dirge of Arcovia does not give you a plus one all skills, only plus one to Necro Monster, so you do lose out on some of the juicy stuff from Occultist. And also, this one does give you Aether and Chaos Rest the pets, which the other one did not. Overall, since you already have enough pets, like 16 pets should be enough, you don't need like a 17th pet on top, right? Mokjong with Alder is probably best in slot here, and also gives you like additional total speed and armor and HP to pets as well down there on the aura that you need to use and yeah it's pretty good. For pants right now I'm using mythical whiteshorn legards for plus 3 hellfire plus 2 call of the grave as well as physical resistance and also bonuses to pants such as all damage percent attack speed and then some potent retail stuff which does not matter at all. I guess you could also like use different pants here like these pants are not BIS in my opinion actually. They are fine they're good but Probably like a green bismuth pound for the like pet affixes on top should be better than this. I should also highlight this pet page over here on the pet bonus page. And as you can see, the main weaknesses are pierce and bleed resistance, as well as well physical. It's kind of fun, I guess. 30% okay ish. But yeah, pierce and bleed are well weak points, and aether is also not quite maxed out. You can also see that like these numbers are fine ish, but like percent all damage is actually a little bit low ish. But you have lots of fire, like percent fire damage, which does not appear over here. So you would have to like add up all of your percent fire damage to cards manually, or like percent elemental damage as well. And then add these up to this all damage bonus over here on top, right? And that's actually not too bad. Like damage should be fine. The main problem is, in my opinion, that you have this pierce and bleeding not quite maxed out. And that did really hurt a lot against Ravager, as you can see in that Ravager video, right? But yeah, let's take this guy for a walk here through the jungle. And after that, I'm gonna also show you a Morgnath kill as well as a Lokar kill, so that you also know where the build really struggles in the main campaign at least. I mean, pets are really smooth for like most main campaign stuff though, it's pretty like a walking simulator so far. Once you meet somebody like Kubakabra though, it's gonna be a little bit harder. Especially Kubakabra is kinda hard for my pet build right now because, yeah, as I showed you earlier, I don't have max out bleed rats. So once my pets start like standing still inside those pools too much, I have to like kite them around, like move them around with pet attack. And yeah, that's when I noticed that like playing pet build is actually not too easy. Like, you do know how to, like, you do have to, like, know how to, like, uh, make your pets not die, or have to, like, pay proper attention to all of these things, like, take them out of the pools here, for example, and otherwise they're gonna die way too fast. But if you do that properly, then something like Kuba Cover is not a big problem, right? Oh, we lost some skeletons. Too many again. Oh, what the? <laughs> yeah, you can't see me like misclicking some of my abilities there. I'm not a good pet player because I'm not used to like go to the second bar like that too often. Which is something you have to do every now and then on a pet build. So... That can be quite annoying sometimes actually. Or like if you're not used to it at least. Renegades of the Boar. Oh well. That's not too bad actually. And yeah, as somebody posted on the forums, I think he was kind of right when he said that pet builds are... Kinda like able to do almost all content. But compared to other builds, they most of the time have like a trade-off between speed and like consistency or like safety when you say that like pets have usually like a slower kill speed than other builds. On the other hand you're as safe, like your own character is as safe as like no other build is like, because you're never in the center of the fray. On skeletons that is a little bit worse for the player because you do have to stand closer to the enemy because of what I told you earlier about the angle range, right? But the statement still is kind of true and um, I do agree, yeah. 
playing a purple like this is kind of a new experience for me actually. Um, it does certainly feel very different to like playing another build because there are like other things you have to like look out for. It's not as much about like fast reaction times, it's more about like strategic decisions and like how you juggle aggro, how you um, juggle around your pets, like to take them out of pools sometimes, etc. That's uh there are like different things you have to like watch out for. I wouldn't say it's easier or harder, and I would say it's just different than like playing non-pet builds. And like depending on like what you are more used to play, whatever it is like your playstyle, what you're like used to play, it's gonna be easier for you, right? So for me personally, playing a pet build is actually harder, I would say, than a non-pet build. At least when it's like important to like actually play the game. There are like lots of parts of the game though where when you're playing a pet build you don't have to like actually play the game, you can just like walk through and the pets are gonna do anything anyway, right? But yeah, there are some key moments, such as for example the fight against Kubakaba, Cabra, right? Where you have to actually play the game and then you have to play it very differently to war when you're like playing a non-pet build. And that's something I wasn't like used to too much. I kinda got used to it now, but I'm still I would say pretty bad at it compared to some other players out there. And that's a well different experience for sure. I would say it's not easier, it's like different. Alright, let's see how we fare against this snake over here. Alright, this one doesn't have bleeding pools, so he's kinda easy, right? Kept. I would say that the Ancient Grove is actually a dungeon where pets are really good. Like, those pets are at least really good. Gargoyle, here we go. It's important that you don't run like too far away from this guy if he like has aggro on you. Yeah, I mean, Sage one always is super easy. Stage 2 he can slap some of your stuff and once your raven dies you will have like less elemental rest, right? So that does hurt quite a bit on this guy, but yeah, I mean, sure, some skeletons die, maybe like a raven dies or right fiend dies, but the kill times are really really fast, I won't say, and this is totally fine. Alright, now here in the tomb of the Morganath, or of the heretic rather, <laughs> um, Things are gonna be a little bit more interesting because here you will have to like resummon the skeletons way more often than before, and also some other uh, pets might die here and there. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Also, this build can get quite laggy to be honest. Like if you are using a bad computer, then I can also not quite suggest you this build. Mainly because of the combination of skeletons, all of their projectiles, and also an omen, which does lag out some computers a lot as well as mine. <laughs> And this guy was a walk in the park, obviously. Like, everything that is kind of single target and uh, doesn't have huge AoE is always super easy for pets in general. So farming the Magi's themselves is going to be actually really, really easy. The Magi fight is probably like easiest with pets, like compared to other bolts. Like it's super easy actually. Um, but Morganath himself is gonna be a little bit more good. So if you just wanna farm the concert rings, yeah, this build is like fine for farming concert rings, definitely. Even on hardcore, this should be no problem at all. And 
Ja, sowas hier. Also over here in this room, the skeletons should not have any problem. They might die like here and there again here because there are lots of enemies spawning here, but uh, like overall this should be a walk in the park actually. So much for walk in the park, right? <laughs> oh my god. Ah, it's more like me unable to play pets properly than this build actually being down. Um, I would say. I'm just too used to be able to love still, like on myself. Don't get hit right. It's like uh, round number one. Always even out that build. Don't forget to check out this boy for his condo recipes as well as the purple mat. Alright, so hopefully I'm gonna fare better against Mogarath this time than the last time. I don't have like too high hopes though, but we'll see here. Actually, this... Okay, okay, now it's actually smooth. I was just... I think I just fucked up the last time. Yeah, that's actually easy, never mind. Never mind... Never mind. I just didn't know how to, like, play with pets against Morganath the last time I was here. Okay, I mean, yeah. Then Morganath is actually not a problem on this build. Never mind, never mind. Since that... We're gonna fight the so well. Let's see if we can also reduce the kill speed on Lokar here a bit. Because the last time I was fighting Lokar, this was horrible as well, actually. <laughs> but maybe that's again because I didn't know like how to play around pets properly. So here against Lokar, I'm still gonna use the pots though because yeah, this just went horrible the last time I tried this on stream. So yeah, better be safe than sorry against Lokar. Right? He is still like a super boss in quotation marks, right? Um, he like should be harder than Morganath, right? And uh, he kind of is at least for this world. There's just too much AoE going on here. This is so stupid, what the hell? There we go. Alright, this was at least better than last time. It wasn't perfect, but I had to cluster there. But at least smoother than the first run. So yeah, this is gonna be it for this video as well, for my fire skeleton pet Kabatas here. It's not the best local killer, obviously, as you can see, and I would not recommend farming local on this character, at least not on hardcore and softcore, it's totally fine. If you wanna check out the other videos of this guy, such as Ravager Kill, well as my SR videos, feel free to check out the other videos down in the description below. And yeah, my short summary for this build will be that it is a overall solid pet build, with the big weakness that it does use skeletons as its main pet.
pet, and skeletons are, well, for the end end game at least, still inferior to other types of pets. Which is, in my opinion, kind of sad because skeletons are kind of cool. I mean, they have like this whole necromancer vibe going for them, and like fire skeletons as well, like burning skeletons. I mean, they're not like visually burning, but they are dealing lots of fire damage, and at least on this world. And if you have like a couple of magi out here, like I don't really have too many magi out here. Like, ideally, you want most of these magi skeletons out. These will deal the most fire damage for you, actually. So, yeah, maybe like a small tweak to skeletons themselves, or maybe to this weapon here as well. Or, I mean, I should probably just like farm better affix right like better prefix better suffix as well as like better panzer and then the build would already be better i guess also like dual purple ring of concert is also obviously gonna be better than one purple one blue but yeah all of that said i am not a pet expert at all and if you guys have any like suggestions how to make this build better feel free to post them down in the comments below and i hope to see you around like and subscribe for more grim dawn content and i'll see you guys around in the next one